All right, guys, welcome to a new video. Today, we're gonna be working on this 1987 Kawasaki KX125. If you guys remember from a couple of videos ago, I picked up four bikes. Um, picked up an RM, a Kawasaki, and then a Kawasaki KDX, and then this bike in 1987 KX125. So, long story short on this bike, it's locked up. Um, does not move at all. So it's solid tight. And um, I got this thing for like $75, so it was a pretty good deal. And the, the rest of the bike is actually in really nice condition. You can see the seat is perfect, not one single rip on there. Plastics are almost perfect on this thing. No cracks or anything. Number plate's perfect. Rims are nice, tires are nice, at least the front one. The back one I swapped out, so that one's not gonna be nice, but. Um, Sprockets are pretty rough on it. Swing arm and everything else is really nice. Engine's actually pretty nice from the outside. It's just locked up. We're gonna figure out that today. But it's got a Makuni carb on it. Nice big carburetor on there. I haven't looked at the air filter or anything yet. The radiator looks like it doesn't have any leaks or anything in it. Um, or big holes. So that's good. It's got all the brakes. Brakes work. Clutch is a little iffy on it. So we'll have to figure that out as well. But yeah, overall, a pretty nice bike. I swapped over this shroud as well. That one's over there on that bike, so don't mind that one. But uh, yeah, it's not a bad looking bike for $75. There's a lot of good parts on it. The pipe is almost dentless. There's a couple small ones down here, but otherwise it's not bad. The silencer is really nice. These silencers alone go for the price of the bike. So right around $100. Um, it's got the throttle, doesn't have any grips though. And then some purple handlebars on it, <laughs> kind of funny. But yeah, so we're gonna dig into this thing today, see what's going on with it. It looks like the previous owner had the head off of it at one point because these, these bolts are loose right here. So that's probably not great. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's start digging into it. We're gonna probably start with taking off the plastics, the seat, and the pipe and get to that engine so we can see what's going on. Seats off. Really, we just have to get off the pipe then. So, let's see. Gotta get this plastic piece off and the pipe. All right, we've got access to the engine now. All right, uh, I guess let's take out the spark plug and get that head off there, see what that looks like. Okay, these are all just hand tight on here. Probably not a great sign, but let's see what's going on. See what the head looks like here. And it does not look like there's a piston in there. Huh. Head looks pretty good though. Gasket's still on there. 
Looks like it was running a little lean. That's probably why it blew up. You can see the white tip of the spark plug right there. See that? So I'm guessing that's what happened here. Looks like the cylinder is not too bad from what I can feel right now. All right, let's dig a little further, but we got the head off. Next, let's get that carburetor out of there. Right there. Oh, it's kind of already out. Let's just take out the carb. <sighs> Makes it easier. Looks like somebody cut the cable right in half to get that out. Oh yeah, that's why. Huh. Look at that carburetor. Holy cow. It just corroded. <laughs> I only have ever seen a carburetor that bad. Oh my gosh. That's insane. Look at that. <laughs> we'll dig into that later, but that's that could be the culprit right there. I think water was getting in. Well, that carburetor didn't look too good. Um, let's take a quick peek before we do this into the air box. The air box is right over here. Let's see what's going on in there, because I think this will tell us why it blew up. Check that out. It's a little rough. That is uh, probably why this bike failed. Let's get a flashlight in there. Check that out. Yikes. Oh man. Goes all the way back there. Oh, that is horrible. That is really, really bad. Look at all the nuts in there. Well, let's get that cleaned out before. Pretty gross. Yum. A little mouse nest going on. Well, that's all cleaned out. Let's get the cylinder off. Alright, here are the power valves right here. Looks like those are still in there. No, they're not. <laughs> I can see the crank in there, kind of. But, alright, let's get this cylinder off, it looks like. 
the wires were taken off too. Where do those go to? Oh, up here. Looks like so the wires were taken off as well. Those are loose too. Power valve cap. There's a little clip on there. Clip right here. Like that. And this thing can come out. There we go. Alright. That little guy's off. That little guy came off. Looks a little crunchy in there. Take a look at the cylinder. Oh, there's some scoring on the cylinder as well. Look at those two scoring marks right there. So a couple deep pits. A couple deep scratches right there, a couple gouges. Yeah, I think the, the cylinder's pretty much toast. It needs uh, a bore. But uh, that's what the cylinder looks like. Alright, moment of truth here for the crank. <laughs> Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, crank is solid on there. <laughs> Doesn't move. It's kind of moving. Let's get some WD-40 down there. Look at the discoloration on the crank. That's crazy. It's a crank rod. Oh, there we go, it went. <laughs> oh my gosh, is that, that's, that's really tight. If we can get this free, we have hope. I'm thinking some water got in here at some point. Holy cow. Might have to take off the side cover and turn it by hand. Oh, what is that? A little piece of metal right there. That's never good. That's this stuff right here. More metal chunks. Oof. Got metal particles everywhere on this thing. That's a lot more locked up than I thought it would be. Let's see if we can crank her. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that. Huge metal chunk. 
Check that out. Right in here. What's that from? <sighs> Something broke apart. Holy. Oh, there's a huge chunk in here. No wonder it's not spinning. Oh, we got part of it here. Look at that chunk. That would be piston skirt right there. Or just the piston. That would probably be why this thing uh, locked up. Came free there. See if we can get this thing to rotate on its own and then um, come back. Man, the piston just fell right apart into the crank. Not good. Alright, I've been working at this for about 30 minutes and uh, this is all I can get out of it. It spins pretty freely, but. Um, it stops in one spot, so. so it'll stop right there, and then it stops right, right there. So there's definitely a piece of metal um, stuck underneath there, causing it to bind up. So this engine needs to come out. It needs to be needs to have the uh, the cases split as well. So we can't really do too much about this. Um, what we're gonna do is probably go over to this bike and try to get that engine out and see if it'll swap into here. I think that's probably the next step, but I mean, obviously we have, to, we have to get this engine out first, so let's get this engine out first and see if that one can be swapped in. All right, so I think what we're gonna do instead, since that engine's already in that frame over there and the plastics on this thing aren't that bad, like the seat's nice, the tank's nice, we can probably swap over the back fender from this one over to here without a big deal. So I mean, most of the plastics are good on this thing. Front fender's good. Number plate we can take from that one over there. Um, the forks we can swap over from that one to this one. And then the front wheel, because that's really what's bad on this. The frame on this one's not that bad. Um, so what we're gonna do is just try to get this engine running today. And uh, you can see that the boot's broken right here. And then swap this boot from this engine over to there. You can see this boot looks pretty good. So hopefully those all line up and we can use parts from this bike to make that one complete. I think that'll be the easiest instead of trying to take this engine out and swapping it over to that one because that means you have to take two engines out. Instead of doing that we could just leave that one in there and swap everything from this one over to that one. I think that's what we're gonna do. So unfortunately we weren't able to save this engine. Um, the crank is locked up and the cylinder is uh, too far gone. So cylinder's rough, really rough. Um, we can probably salvage the power valves out of there because it's got the caps on there. And then this boot doesn't, ooh, maybe it does look pretty bad. Huh, that boot does look pretty rough, doesn't it? Um, I don't know, we'll have to figure out something, but this carburetor isn't savable. You can see the corrosion in there, it's just insane. I might take a look in the inside and just see what that looks like, just for fun, but you can see it's all broken. <laughs> that is crazy. But yeah, let's, uh, let's go work on the other bike, see if we can get that engine running today.
All right, new bike in. This is a 1986 KX125. So. Let's take a look at this engine and see if we can get some sparks, see if we can get it to run, and then um, attempt to put everything from that bike that we just worked on over to this bike. I know the pipe doesn't fit yet, so um, hopefully some of the other engine parts do. If we have to buy a new pipe, that's not the end of the world. It's uh, mostly just trying to piece these together to make a complete bike. I know some of the shrouds and stuff fit on there, so it should be, should be fine. All right, let's get going with this. I know already this thing turns over and has like 165 pounds of compression, so that's good. Let's check for a spark here quick. At least we have some parts now to work with. Oh, good spark. Great spark, that's a good sign. Awesome. All right, let's uh, let's get this boot off of here. Without ripping the whole thing off. I feel like this carburetor is in better shape than the other one. Alright. Oh, man. Oh. Okay. A little crusty. Yeah, that carb needs to be clean still. But we'll get to that boot next. Check and see how the reeds are doing too in here. Alright, the reeds look pretty good. There's a tiny chip out of that one right there. But not too bad. Here's the rip in the boot right there. It goes all the way through. So what we're gonna put a little uh, epoxy on there, on the inside as well, and I try to repair that. All right, we got a little two-part epoxy here. It's ten, or I think it's five-minute epoxy actually. This stuff works pretty well. All right now Got to get it in between that crack. Right there. Let it kind of soak into it a little bit. Kind of pull that crack apart a bit there. I'm gonna continue that and I go on the inside as well. All right, we got her all epoxied up here. Looking pretty good to the inside as well. So that shouldn't have any leaks after that dries. What we're gonna do next is clean out this air box. Let's see what's in there. All these air boxes and all these have micey mice in here and uh, that's not good. Uh, there's a little stuff in there, but not, not as bad as the other ones. You can see a little bit of crap in there. We'll vacuum that out quick. Let's 
I'm going to try to rob this um, radiator off of the 87 and put it on the 86 over here. Because this one, remember, it was all bent and crappy. And then there was a hole in it, so. Let's try robbing this one off of here and see if it'll fit. All right, here it is, let's see if it'll fit. All right, I think that's gonna bolt up. I think that'll bolt up just fine. All right, the only thing we have to change is the um, coolant line. This one wraps around the frame like that. We need it to go through the frame because this little guy doesn't reach like that. So this one's going to go through the frame right here and then like that as I robbed off the other one. through here, like this. I'll tighten up right there. This will be going out to the back over here. Perfect, look at that. All right, cooling system's done. This bike is missing the clutch and all the grips and everything. Uh, I think the throttle works on this. Let's see, yeah, the throttle works. It's just a little gunked up. But we're gonna try to take the clutch from this bike, clutch perch and everything over and uh, see if that fits on there. I don't know if the clutch cable's gonna work, but we'll have to see. All right, we got the clutch on there. I think we need a new clutch cable. It's pretty much locked up and uh, it's not really working too well. So might have to order up a new clutch cable, but the clutch perch and lever is on. Um, let's take a look at the carburetor next. See what that looks like on the inside. All right, let's take a look at the carburetor. Hopefully it's not too bad. Ooh, some gunk coming out of it. Looks like oil. That's not too bad. Just needs the ultrasonic cleaner. See down this hole right here. It's actually clear in there, which is amazing. <laughs> Little pilot jet. See what size 
35 for the pilot. For the main, we're running a... It looks like a 340 for the main. Well, we'll probably let this soak in the ultrasonic cleaner for a bit and uh, come back and then blow it out with the air compressor. All right, well, we're almost done with this bike. Um, I think next video we'll get the carburetor on there and see if this thing starts up. If it does and it sounds good, we'll order up a pipe for it because I don't think this one's going to fit on there. We'll, we'll try to make it work, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Um, but yeah, this bike should be a runner. It has good compression. It'll be getting fuel and spark, so we shouldn't have a problem there. First start coming up next video. Unfortunately, we could not save the 87 over here. The engine was just too, too bad, and the piston really got us with those chunks in the crank. And uh, it scored the cylinder wall and made it pretty much impossible to run. So I think we're gonna part this bike out or save it for the frame and engine swap it. If we get a different engine or something like that, I'm not too sure what we're gonna do. Um, and then we've got another bike over here, KX uh, 125 from 80, I believe this is a 84. So we'll try to work on that one too. But stay tuned guys. Anyway guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video of diagnosing the problem with the 87 and then repairing the 86. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time, we are out. <laughs>